Right, so this is going to lend more major pentatonic because we're playing a major. Right? Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't play minor over that, but generally speaking, yeah, it's it's major. So that's the pentatonic that goes with it. As I was saying is once you get better and you understand all five of your shapes, you put your pentatonics there, you're fluently moving through congruent phrasing. We've been talking about that. We can keep going with that. You can extend these chords. And that's good that you played it like this, by the way, because this is the Hendrix way, but it's also just very practical. I mean, people play that. It's a great spot to sit with on guitar, you know? Generally, you're not always going to be playing the full six string bar, you know. So having that top half is always good in all of these shapes. We can talk about that too. But if you were to extend it to major seven, now you have that, right? And you've played that, but maybe you want to play it up top. Understanding it in that position. Yeah, there you go, right? And if you wanted like major nine, Kind of a little trickier but it's super colorful you know what i mean and hearing that we don't need to get into it right now i'm yeah. just giving you a general skinny but it all stems from the foundation of here's the e shape so if we do it in a completely different key d flat just play the e shape for d flat the same thing it's the same pentatonic it's the same shape it's the same oh but we wanted that major nine sort of a thing and then oh maybe we'll do you know that kind of a thing which is cool but all it is is just a stem from this mm -hmm. so that same concept goes for all of the other shapes there's only five of them because the guitar is a five octave instrument most yeah. well believe it or not most guitar players actually don't even think about that but that's the reality that's why you have five boxes five ways you can play things five octaves i mean unless you have like a seven or an eight string guitar it's a little bit different but most of us just have six strings so that just kind of gives you like a preview of the future and how that's like taking things to the next 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 level that's like very advanced you're adding extensions to these cores nines thirteens focusing on those aspects and then obviously modes, you can stay out of, you can get out of pentatonic when you're comfortable. Yeah. You can add, let's say, Lydian. Get some of those modal aspects in there, you know, or even mix a Lydian. So on and so forth. And that's kind of where, we're, where you're going to head at some point if you're going to reach that kind of advanced sort of thinking, you know? So backing things up, why don't we just go through the five shapes and the pentatonic that goes with it? So we'll go back to A, okay? Yeah, so let's play the shapes and then I want you to play the, the major pentatonic with it. Okay. So you could start from that shape. We already played the E shape. A minor, we need a major. Okay. Um. Good. And a good practice that I tell everyone, and it's worked for years for everyone, including me, is chord, scale, chord. So what I'll do is I'll go chord, E shaped A major, scale, we're playing A major pentatonic, and with the chord. This really like ingrains it in your mind. The chord, the chord. Yeah. Okay. So, moving on. This goes into the D shape. And they all connect by one note or more. So index needs to go down a half step. Yeah. Right. And the shape, so that's the chord, D shaped A. And visually, by the way, you want to be able to understand, oh, that makes sense. It's a D shape because yeah. it's like a D, right? 
although we play D like this, fingering wise, if you didn't have the luxury of the bar, yeah, you'd have to refinger that, you know. So in any other key other than D, even just going up D sharp, E, you have to automatically start adding in that first finger. So here's the D shape in the pentatonic. What was the shape again for that, for the D? Yeah. So now do chord scale chord in that shape. So, um, wait. All right, awesome. So in caged, all right, we just did D, so it starts back over at C. These three, connect into the C shape. Close. If you play the D shape, right? That's close. That's you gotta move everything up a straight. Or down a straight. Right here, you want this. Uh, close, middle finger on the uh, B string, second string, and index, index of all down. Three. And then pentatonic. Now, you can do a couple things here. You can play it like that. Depends, some people move their finger, that's fine, you know, whatever is comfortable for you. Right. And so now chord, scale, chord. Wait. Okay, this pinky, this root, connects to the next shape, which is the A shape. And this one. Yeah, you know. Yeah, always end with it, because you really want to ingrain it in your mind. Exactly. Yeah. So the last shape is the G shape. Let's we'll take this down an octave though. We'll do it here. Yeah. So you don't even need the middle finger for this. It's just to the, all the way to the B string. Yeah. If you do get the high E, you're, you're adding a sixth, which is not the same thing. Yeah. Be, that'd be an A major six. We're not we're not looking for that right now. We just want the root triad, you know, the triad. So, and the shape is easy. Everybody knows that as the minor pentatonic. But if you're in a major key, you're starting from yeah, right. So again, just to reiterate, it might seem not that you're looking at it this way, but it may seem like oh, you know, this is great to know and all, but where is this really gonna apply and it's going to apply it's going to spill over into all your playing songs you're writing songs you're playing songs you're learning solos literally everything because you're, you'll start viewing things within a shape and it just gives you more control you can map out this fretboard so much easier and if you don't do it then you know i mean you could still be great there's a lot of great guitar players that we know of that never learn the cage system but 
I bet you there's limitations to their playing. Yeah. I can guarantee you I've jammed with some of my heroes. And I always thought, oh, you know, they must know everything. But you, they don't. A lot of them don't because they never – learn these systems and i've had even a lot of them tell me man yeah i wish i would have learned some of that like you because i'd know my way around the fretboard they yeah. make signature guitar players which is amazing they have signature shit but it doesn't mean that they can navigate the fretboard yeah. seamlessly and effortlessly you know yeah. so if you can make this part of your practice <clears throat> for the next month or so just picking a key doesn't matter. Challenge yourself. And you could do this when you warm up. You could say, okay, I'm going to go to B flat, the nearest B flat. Well, technically it's the A shape, but for right now, the G shape. Okay, play the pentatonic after. Then connect it. That connects into the E shape. And start memorizing these patterns. That goes to the D shape. And it'll get real familiar. You'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I get this. Okay. C shape. You want to be able to move relatively quick, the A shape. So it doesn't matter what key you go to, you'll always know based on the shape, you know? Mm -hmm. Good deal. Okay, so we could take this in many directions. Um, I'm trying to remember what else we were doing. We were talking about some blues soloing and whatnot. Talk, phrasing and more like technique stuff like alternative picking and sweeping. Right. Okay. So the blues thing, let's let's touch on that for a minute. I don't know, I don't know that it was direct blues. We just had a back track. Yeah. Kind of playing right. Yep. Yeah, we were just trying to be a little more consistent with the phrases, and we were practicing yeah. with different beats, like taking a simple phrase, but like really going slow with it, you know? So let's let's try something in A, because we just did the shapes in A. Let's, let's get out of what we did last lesson, because you have that recorded. You can always view that. So let, let's try... Do an A7 vamp. It's just A7, literally. So we're going to use major pentatonic. We're not going to use minor because you're a bit more familiar with that. And I want to test the waters for you. So let's stay in the E shape. It's technically over an A7, but we could still treat it as major pentatonic because an A7 still has the root major third and the fifth of a natural major chord, which is adding the flat seven. So let's talk about some basic phrases and be congruent here. So let me just think, if I just do like a basic thing, breath, now we're spun. Okay. Now let me take that same thing, but do some bands. And I only use two strings. So let's take that. Let's take some common areas that you'll see in these shapes mm -hmm. for, for major pentatonic. So you'll see this a lot. That, well, the half step, that works, but... For the sake of what this is, let's be more deliberate. It's got to be a whole step. Right? We're staying within these guidelines. We're purposely trying to restrict ourselves. We're not going to get super bluesy and creative and get that minor third and the seven. We're going to avoid that right now because I want you to have full control over each of the scales before you start really doubling up yeah. scales and stuff. So why don't you find that track? It's just, I just typed in A7 Vamp and it's by Guitar Improvisation. It's, it looks like it's like a foreign channel, but it just has a black screen and it says Groove Accord A7. What's the channel? 
Uh, it's guitar improvisation. It's got 215,000 views. Turn the backing track down just a hair for me. Yeah. Not not a lot, just a hair. It was a little louder than your guitar. And, and let's go back to some of those things. This is why we're we're training this consistently. Think simpler, like really simple. If you can't make slow stuff sound good, don't even try and add a bunch of other yeah. things. So just take that. There's a phrase. Let it breathe. Give it something similar. Mm -hmm. And then a bending. Let's try, just try those two things for a sec. Good. Now breathe. That was perfect with the phrasing. However, this bend, uh, you're going to a major seven. That's so it's not in pentatonic, right? If you're going to do it, you got to go step and a half, which is cool. But just yeah. know that that's where you're going. Yeah. Don't take a guess on it, because then you're going to play a major seven against that, and that's okay if you really know how to convincingly sell that. So I'm yeah. trying to get you to avoid any of those pitfalls. Yeah. So that was great what you just did. If I kind of demonstrate that, you kind of went. And then you went. Fine. Now a bend. That's fine. We're sitting fancy. That, it works. It doesn't need to be. Yeah. We can add that, you know, but we're moving up to that. Okay, good. So, did we talk about the Hendrix fills? Did we talk about that? Sort of. We got a little bit into it, but not much. Okay. Well, let, let's add a little bit of that because that that stuff really outlines and makes major pentatonic shine. Yeah. If you can get. get that in your playing you will really like sweeten up the sound yeah. so that's just taking those notes and adding some double stops yeah and then this part now we're, this is all within major pentatonic so this is within, that works too that's nice what i was doing was fourth fret, fifth fret, yep. Right. Now, third finger does the hammer on to the G string. Oh. Not not that far. It's only a whole step away. Oh, I got it. Right. So if you piece those up. There you go. Right. You can add that root on the with your pinky if you want to. Yes. Right. This is just a, an entry level kind of way to, to dabble into this. Get your feet wet with those those double stops. Lots of ways you can go about it. And there's a lot you can explore within just one shape. So check it out. Same thing. Mm -hmm. 
start adding it in with those normal single note lines. That's just major pentatonic. We haven't even gotten dangerous and went with minor pentatonic, which is that blend of mixing. Yeah. You gotta be careful though. Yeah, you don't get too crazy with it. You gotta make sure you stay with those pentatonic lines because you'll get out of key and then it won't make yeah. sense against the chord, you know? Yeah, right. This is really big in R&B and in pop culture. It's big in blues and rock, but really, really, it more so in like soul R&B. Like you'll get that sort of a progression, like if it was a. Uh, I'm just going with each of the chord shape. That was really stiff, but I'm saying for the sake of what I'm showing you, like that was going, oh. that's kind of fitting in yeah so that's probably useful with your band too and session yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah it's great so that those those double stop type of things you can use them in minor as well but they really enhance and sweeten up the sound when it comes to major and major pentatonic so if you come across a situation where you're you're improvising or you're writing in major Consider these because they really make things beautiful. I mean, it doesn't have to be on the high strings either. It could be. You can tell it's just a very beautiful type yeah. of sound. So we can keep expanding, you know, along the way with adding those to each of the shapes because each of the shapes they have their own sweet spots i'm just showing you the e shape we've only talked about one shape here we haven't even connected other things on the fret on other areas of the fretboard and that's something i want you to get really good with like milk as much as you can out of one shape so then when you go to other shapes you're like really just owning it i mean it's like damn everything this guy plays is just it's great, you know? So that's a good place to start. So let's try that. Why don't you try a couple phrases with, to the backing track of just those lines. You can, you know, get creative with rhythm. You can, you don't have to do it the same every time, but try getting a couple passages in there with that. Okay. Take your time. That was cool. So let me show you. Let's let's integrate another shape now. Let's throw in that G shape. Yep. Yep. Same five notes being repeated. We're just doing it in this shape. It's the same exact notes, you know? Exactly. It's pentatonic. It's not, nothing's changing except how we visually just play the pattern. That's it. This is literally the same. We could play an A7 here. We could play it there. We could play that. It's the same notes. It's just in a different place. You know what I'm saying? So let's do some of those double stops. And this is this, but up here. Yeah. 
All right, the G shape is a bit of a cheat shape. Like a lot of people will go there and just hang out there all day because it's yeah. easy. So one thing I like to do is that's like an easy kind of right. You'll get more rhythmically savvy the better you get. Yeah. Don't worry about that too much. Like, you know, me flowing like I am with dynamics. And that's just from like really like yeah. dig, you know what I mean? Like experience season. You're, you'll get that, but you got to start with. So if I connect a couple of those. Maybe slower. Try that. Try connecting. Try going from here to the E shape to the G. Try and see if you can get savvy with that. Sounded great. That's so much sweeter and more musical than anything we played. Well, not anything, but that's your that's a way better direction for you to grow from, right? So in this G shape, let's talk about some single note lines. Which is the same as this. Right? Good. Now, on that first thing you did, make sure your thumb is always there when you're bending. Don't lose that because you lose all stability and all strength when you do that. Don't don't go. Don't do that. Even if you can, yeah. just try to avoid that. Yeah. Now, does that go for bending on any string? Like if I were to bend on the G string, keep it there? Okay. Yes. The only time I avoid the thumb is when I got to play like complex chords. Yeah. I need the technique, or if it's, you know, like a sweep, something yeah. that, that's a technical based thing, maybe it's like fast three note per strings, that's fine. But when it comes to bending, this is where all your strength and stability is, is right here in your wrist. You take that away, and it just sounds like crap. It's like, yeah. even, even if you do it in tune, it's like this guy's struggling right now. Whereas if you just simply put that over. You're in you're in control. You know what I mean? OK, so common places here. In the G shape. Right. Good. Mm -hmm. Even. Uh, oh, sorry, let me think here. Let me give you another. You can go high up. Here on the high E. Yep. Yeah, see, that's what I want you to work on is like, oh, let me make sure I'm doing this in tune, right? So, so back to back to the track. Stops. Maybe connecting the two shapes now. Right, like now it's starting to get kind of juicy. Yeah. 
double stops mixed with bending, but it just kind of comes from seeing it in a shape, E shape to the G shape, and you're gonna work out your licks and find some spots that feel really good to you. Yeah. Wouldn't matter what key we're in because we're viewing it as a chord shape. So if we took the whole thing up to B flat, a half step up, there's the G shape, there's the E, all of this is exactly the same. So like, here's the E shape. It's all the same. Here's the G shape. The same licks I was doing. And I'm just playing it a half step higher because I'm seeing it in a shape, you know? Yeah. Good. All right, so that's some caged talk, major pentatonic, adding some Hendrix fills. They're not really like technically, yeah. they're not technically termed as Jimi Hendrix fills, but him and Curtis Mayfield were like the first yeah. that we know of to do that sort of a thing. So they kind of get the coin for it. Mm -hmm. You can do those fills throughout the neck. It's not just there, but this is a good place to start to get you rolling without overwhelming you with. But if I did show you like as a demonstration, moving through the same. there but i'm showing yeah. how yep. you could right giving you like the possibilities of what it can be if you but if you had never known oh it's within these cage shapes and it's double stops hendrix fills if you just saw someone playing that you might not you you might think differently like oh that looks man that that might be kind of hard to get or what what's going on there but now that you know kind of like what what built that it's not so complex it's like well okay right all right so let's move on to some technique then so we had talked about alternate picking right yep okay so w what did we do with that were we working with the metronome or were we how are um, we doing that you gave me like a pattern to play and okay. no metronome i don't think and what, what was that pattern that I gave you? Um, I think one of them was doing minor pentatonic in fifth, so like... Okay, it was just like some pattern. Was it... That? But yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's not going in fifths. That's just up the scale and then going back. That was just like a basic idea conceptually, uh -huh. but focusing more on this hand, alternating yeah. down, up, down, up, down, up. You can take that, you can go up any scale and connect and go down the next shape so on and so forth and you're actually killing multiple whoop, killing multiple birds with one stone you're memorizing your scale patterns and you're building your picking technique i used to do this like for hours in high school it's kind of silly but it's great when you you know if you really want to build that technique it's very Joe Bonamassa, Eric Johnson. They'll take those pentatonics and they'll just glide through them. Yeah. The best thing to do would be to put a click to it. When you're ready to do that, I'm down to kind of work on that and focus on rhythmic value, making mm -hmm. sure you're doing it in time, not just freely, because freely doesn't really make sense when you're playing yeah. with a band. 
So, um, okay. So we could take a pattern if you want. I mean, so how well do you know these minor pentatonic boxes? I know better than others. Like. And then the rest is like they're fuzzy to me. Well, there's only two more. I mean, you basically just nailed three of them. Close. Close. Close, yeah. Then I don't know the last one. Okay, so it would be... They're the same exact shapes as the major pentatonic, but they're in the relative minor of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if I don't know how much you know about relative major and minor, but for every major key, there's a minor that has the same exact notes, it shares the same exact things but we're basically accenting different notes because it's minor and the progression might change a little but it's the same exact harmony same exact notes the patterns are just going to be in a little bit different of a place so i don't want to throw too much at you with that right now but it'll make more sense as you move through the caged shapes uh -huh. and you start applying your scales you'll understand it a little bit more that's a very hard concept to fully digest for anyone like the relative major and minor, why that's even a thing. It can be hard for people to kind of digest that, yeah. but that's the skinny on it. So let's talk about the metronome here. I'm giving you like the the really detailed, nuanced stuff here, which is great. I think you're handling it really well. I don't give that to most students, like jumping from, you know, cage and major pentatonic and all this stuff, double stops to metronome i guess it's kind of a lot which is good i'm glad you're absorbing that so let's say i put the click on here's 100 bpm whatever and i'm going to do quarter notes which is one note per beat three four and i'm going to do a minor pentatonic this is a little slow i'll go eighth notes so one and two and three and four and i'm going to go to the next shape I did a slide into it. Next shape. Next shape. Last shape. And then maybe back. And this is helping you stay in time. Really synchronizing, building dexterity. Oh, sorry. You're memorizing your shapes. You can always subdivide to, you can go, if you're, you know, experiment, when you get comfortable with the beat, maybe triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's kind of like a good practice right there, yeah. developing your, your rhythm value while you do that, instead of just like aimlessly with no no tempo behind you. There's a trap in that, trust me. I did that for a long time. And then when I started playing in a band or playing with other musicians in jazz band in high school, I was so out of time. I had killer technique, killer. I was clean as hell, but it didn't matter because none of my licks were in time. And nobody can understand you if you're not in time. They have nothing to feel from your rhythm, you know? So let's put a click on. Do you have a do you have the an app on your phone yeah. or do you have to, okay? So that was at 100 BPM. I think that's a good place to start. So we're doing eighth notes. Let's get two notes for beat. Wait, so. Close. That's major, not quite. So. Start that shape over. X 
Excellent. I like how when you messed up or you played a wrong note, you kind of keep going. Yeah. That's good. Keep that pulse and the rhythm going. If you if you, you it's weird to say, but I really feel like anyone you can develop bad habits. You could develop like a jarring habit where you stop, start, stop, start. I did that and it's not good. If you stay more like what you did, just play through it, let the rhythm roll. You're going to you're going to be a lot smoother with your rhythm and your playing. So let's try the same thing, but can you do it in triplets? Yeah, I could try. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm blanking on the shape. That's all right. The rhythm's right, but you know. The... I got it. That's weird. Okay, I'm that's, sure. a, that's, that's a major. So minor would be. I'm gonna start over. Uh, you can, yeah, sure. Yeah. Close. I think I need to so this, know. This is, yeah. I need to be more familiar with the shapes. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a little bit more familiar. That's pretty good, though. I think you're doing really well. You're only like a step away from killing it and just focusing strictly on like the technique of it because that's really what the objective of this is the prime objective. The best thing to do is to put the chord shapes with it. That's. It, I, but it's a lot to give you because we just did major. Yeah. The best thing to do is go E shape. And then D shape. And see it as a chord shape. C shape. Just like major pentatonic, do the same thing for minor. It's a lot. I'm giving you a lot. That's what I said earlier. This is why I was like, I don't want to give you too much with this, but it is the best way to probably go about it. So even though I'm going through these, I still see that as an underlying E shape. I'm still saying to myself, that's E, this is D. You can even stop play that chord you know this is c shape this is a shape so let's try this let's don't worry about the shapes right now what i want to see i want to hear i want to have you change up the rhythm values Okay. Start maybe start with like eighth notes one and two and three and go to triplets one two three one two three one two three one two three back to eighth notes triplets try it within the same same tempo and see if it's something that comes easier to you because that's more like what soloing is you're adding different rhythmic subdivisions as opposed to like a linear this is all eighth notes this is all triplets you know. You don't have to do all five shapes. Just do what you're comfortable with and focus more on the rhythm. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Yeah, that's good. You're you're rhythmically in time. There's still room for getting even more comfortable with the beat, not waiting for a downbeat to start again. You know what I mean?
you'll get there. You just got to spend more time with the click. It needs to be part of your practice. Yeah. In general, the click is the metronome is the musician's best friend. Yep. It's really all a great drummer practices with. It's yeah. like I I rarely feel like I feel like rarely does a great drummer not have a click going in their ears when they're at least at home practicing. Mm -hmm. You know, they always have that. It's all about being in time and, under, yeah. and manipulating the beat. Should be the same thing with any guitar player, even if it was, you know, it could be. Manipulating it, leaning back even more, pocket like. Like really behind the beat. Maybe on top of the beat now. That feels a little different. And then maybe ahead. Not out of time, but yeah, ahead of the beat, you know? There's a total difference in vibe when you're doing that. And I gave that example because it's not just running through exercises alternate picking with the click it's everything it can be songs riffs progressions you know anything that you're doing in general so adding a click into your practice routine is killer i mean as much as you can use a metronome put it on i'm telling you. yeah some form of time if you can so why don't you try 16th notes now so one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a Try to add that. Try that. Try some 16th notes. That was weird. Hard, yeah, it's hard. It doesn't have to be that specific pattern. You're just okay. getting fluidity with 16th notes. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting there. That's pretty nasty. That's that's it. You just gotta you just gotta keep doing it, you know. If you spend just a few days doing that for like 10 minutes, yeah, you'll get some razor chops. So then when you do hit it with, you know, distortion, you, you hit it with a good old, and you're turned up, you know, then it's really. It gets pretty nasty. Yeah. And, you know, people are noticed and you're in time. So it's like yeah. really cutting through. Everybody's feeling it, and they're like, damn. You know, like you're really, like, burning it up, you know. But it starts with <clears throat> what that is right there. As you get more savvy, again, you can abbreviate or hyphenate or, if you want to, if you will, like, segment each part. You don't have to just, like, linearly go up and down. Although if you can do that, I mean that's that's probably the hardest it's gonna get. But you can break the lines up. Play with the beat. Get on those ands. Everything's much more comfortable on the and. Then you know when you got the balls to go go sixteenth note triplets. You know, yoga yeah, yeah. it up. <laughs> and that's when it's like, whoa, like way over the top, you know. Yeah, yeah and it's in time, but you're building up to that with yeah. these yeah values. Exactly.
Now you can do some you could do some other fragments like. I learned from Zach Wild a long time ago. He's got he's really great at this this whole fast pentatonic thing. So you could take just those top two strings and you could go You could really like ah, see I messed that up. take just a couple strings at a time and you can work like that to kind of move along yeah it's weird you'll, you'll get it you'll get it this is gonna help you out tremendously. Yeah. Not for technique, but memorizing some of your boxes and whatnot. Yeah. Good. Well, I mean, that's a lot we covered in this lesson, so I don't wanna give you 